Hey guys, how you doing? Having a lot of people ask for me to play with artillery, and yes, I did get a new microphone, new headset, and everything. The game sounds exceptionally well better, and as far as I can tell so far, so does my voice, which is nice. Instead of using the microphone that's built into my laptop, right now the only artillery I have in my garage is the GW Panther, the uh, Tier 7 German artillery, and the M44. I'm almost done with the GW, and I'm working my way up to the GW Tiger P. A few more times too, or just a few more grind out battles, it's not too bad. The tank itself is actually one of the better artillery in the game, but it gets kind of sidewind stuck into like a tier 7, where tier 7 doesn't really play that big of a role in strongholds or team battles and clan wars, etc, etc. You really want to aim for more tier 6, 8, and 10. But regardless, it's still a really good artillery. It has a 150 caliber gun, the reload is pretty good for it with my crew and my equipment and everything. I got it down to about 29 and some change seconds. The penetration is kind of weak, but being it's an artillery gun, it's okay. 88 penetration is actually pretty decent for its tier. 1200 damage is kind of low depending on which artillery you're looking at, but the 1200 damage is a solid all around number. And then again, 1200 damage is only if you fully penetrate with that shell. It has 240 for the heat shell, which is really good, but the heat shell has almost no splash to it, if any splash at all. And right down here you see how it ha says high explosive, high explosive anti-tank, and then high explosive again, and I'll get to that high explosive in a second. The aim is actually pretty good for it with a 7.7 .7 dispersion and a 7 second aim time that's not too shabby. The tank has mediocre hit points for its, it's got um, a lot of weight for its size and it has a pretty weak engine, but the top speed is okay, the armor is laughable and pointless unless you're fighting maybe a loose you'll bounce a few rounds off the front of your tank it's not that big a deal but you do have that spaced armor shield going around your turret which is also considered spaced armor for your tank as well but they can penetrate through your turret you just don't want to eat any heat shells or um he shells through that the only thing you're ever gonna maybe possibly stop of that spaced armor going around the side of your tank is a really really low tier HE shell which probably shouldn't be playing with you in the first place has a really good or a really slow gun traverse speed sorry but has a really good gun arc it's got one of the biggest gun arcs in the game and I'm really stoked to get up to the 21 centimeter that has 2000 damage and 105 penetration now it is noticeably less accurate it goes from 0.7 to 0.88 but the aim time only goes up by half a second and the reload doesn't go up too far so that's not too shabby, it's not too bad, it's an all-around good tank. I enjoy playing the GW Panther. If you'll notice, I didn't bother getting the engine or the tracks. I'm just going to go ahead and get the Tier 8, and then I'll go back and get the engine and the tracks. Because, well, either way, it doesn't matter. To me, I almost never move with the GW Panther anyways, because it's kind of a slow, bulky target. And I really don't end up having to displace that much as an artillery, because I either get a pretty decent game, or I just get killed, and it happens. You don't really get to that much of a chance to relocate in the GW Panther. Also, on top of that, the uh, engine size difference right here is laughable. It's only 25 more horsepower, and the track only gives you two more traverse speed. So I really wasn't all that worried about it. I just want to get to the Tier 8, and I want to start doing the Tier 8, and I don't want to bother wasting 12,000 experience researching these other modules that are going to end up being pretty much useless anyways. Maybe it would have saved me one or two times out of the 200 battles I've had, but... It's not that big a deal. Now if you click on your ammunition down here, anyone that you click on, it'll bring up this. And you can look, I have 22 and 8 shells loaded. Now, these are your standard shells, these are your gold rounds, and these are also gold rounds. They're a little less expensive, but you'll notice they're high explosive Spunger 36 rounds instead of being the G31s. Now, the only difference between these you'll see right here. If you right click on the shell, it'll bring up all the characteristics of the shell. Now this first one, the standard shell, 150 caliber, 66 to 110 penetration, 900 to 1500 damage, and of course this right here, both of these numbers, this is your 25% differential based on the random number generator. And 357, this is the big thing, this 3.57 is your splash radius, 3.57 meters. If you hit anywhere more than 3.5 meters away from a target, you're not going to do any splash damage, if you do splash damage. So that is where the big, the, the big part of it I wanted to talk about. Now the penetration for this goes from 180 to 300, but it has significantly less damage and no splash at all. And this is why the second high explosive shell is a gold round, 
It has the same penetration as the first one, and it has the same damage, but you'll notice that the blast radius is two meters bigger. So that this is a really good shell for firing at targets that are way on the other side of the map, being as how it takes two, three seconds for the shell to land. You don't know if the target's going to move from then, and maybe you can get a little more splash into it. Or if you have a scout coming towards you, and you know he's going to be moving fast and coming at you from your side, if you shoot this, and at least if you land anywhere near him, because it's a scout tank and it's relatively weak, you can break his track or do more damage than you would just firing a regular HE shell. You might hit, like, two meters away from the scout with a regular HE shell and do like 200-300 damage, but with this you could be doing 400-500 damage because it has such a higher burst radius and you can hit farther away and still penetrate and do damage to them. The heat shell is going to be pretty much useless against anything besides maybe like an OI or a E75 and things from that. If you're shooting at them from the front, that's why I only have loaded two and I've only ever fired maybe six heat shells ever and I'm really not all that impressed with it. They penetrate, but they don't do nearly as much damage when they do penetrate. It's just when I'm firing at something and I really cannot hurt them. So, <clears throat> let's go ahead and take it into a match. Hopefully we have a pretty decent game. I'm actually aiming for Tier 8 and Tier 9, and not a city map. That's the city map. I don't really like playing the Tier 7 games with my Tier 7 artillery, because the smaller the tanks are, the smaller tier. Usually the faster they are, and the smaller they are, and the harder the, of a target they are to hit. But with these bigger tanks, they're slow, they're big, they move less often, they camp more often, making them easier to hit with an artillery shell. <coughs> Alright, so I'm loaded in on the south side of Kharkov. You can look at the map, there's one, two, three, four, five, six artillery in the game. Sucks for all six of us, but I think I can pull it off and maybe get some pretty decent shots going here. I'm going to obviously be looking for people down here in this square because I know I can hit down here. And certain parts of the city up in here I can hit as well. Now there actually used to be when this map first came out there was a glitch where you could get any artillery up into this spot up here. And it was completely surrounded in vehicles and you couldn't get to them. But it took like two or three tanks to push you up into there. And then you were stuck once you got up there. You couldn't get back out of it. So it was actually a pretty interesting spot because you could hit a pretty decent amount of the map from sitting right there and you were pretty much invincible except for other artillery or somebody flying over the top of that ridge with like a Panzer 1C or something and getting you because any artillery itself could not get up there. Maybe the BERT, the FV-304, but I don't have one and I've never tried it, but I have gotten up there before and it was pretty interesting. Um, I have been called a hacker for doing it as well, but then again it was kind of an exploited glitch spot. But that was in the past, I'm not too worried about it. Right off the bat I got this Cromwell and a VK-30P. Both are pretty soft medium tanks, but they're both relatively fast. So I want to be careful where I'm aiming these shots. Take it and boom! Finish them off. Notice how I aimed ahead of him, knowing the trail being 500 meters away. I'm going to go ahead and guess it was like one and a half, two seconds for a firing trail till I hit the target where I was aiming. And I wanted to wait till the circle was a little bit smaller. Now I did not move vertically. Because when you move vertically, the size of your aiming reticle increases, whereas, or, sorry, horizontally, but whereas you move vertically, it does not increase, it stays the same size. So if you're aiming at a target, preferably you want to aim at somebody that's driving towards you, not somebody who's driving or strafing towards you. That makes it a little harder to hit them, and the aiming circle grows and grows. So I'm see if I can't um, get a few shots here, let them know I'm loaded. Aiming it on this OI over here. Ooh, and he moved. Can I hit him from here? Theoretically I can, but I'm going to wait till he moves a little bit. No, I'm not going to try that. It's not worth it. The is going to be dead in a second. He finishes off the Cromwell. Ooh, and I still hit the E8. I thought he was going to keep backing up by the time I had already fired. I hit that E8, finished him off. Now, unfortunately, there is an Oni headed for the base, and I do not want to be fighting that. That is what I'm talking about firing heat shells against. If he's coming dead at my face like that, the way he is... <coughs> Sorry, I got a cough. Uh, a heat shell would probably be a pretty good idea, because the heat shell has a decent enough penetration, but he's got 250 front armor, and it's 240 average. So if I got lucky and hit that near 300 roll, I might be able to penetrate him, but right off the bat normally, I'm not really looking too great with that odd. Fired straight over his head, not really expecting to hit him, just trying to take pot shots at him. 
get him off the other artillery, which he has already killed, or they've already been killed by somebody else. And go ahead and hightail it out of here while he's sitting on top of the cat, because I know he's not going to come after me. I'm way too quick compared to him. This guy's just going to keep spamming the chat. By the way, that doesn't really solve anything. That just makes people mad at you. Ooh, and I guess I upset him enough he's going to come after me. Bring it, little man. Let's go. Let me see your side armor. Call for help one more time. Maybe somebody's paying attention other than that E3. Not that I don't welcome the E3's help, but if he's going to take on that Oni, he needs to have a few more hit points and be smart about it. E3 is pretty much a T20. So, got to be careful with that. Oni is driving away. He's engaging the E3. He's already fired. Maybe he's got the big cannon. Didn't quite sound like it, but I'm going to see if I can't get a shot into his rear and finish him off. Help out my team. And boom, he's gone. That E3 was sure going to die without me helping out right there. And I defended the base. Ooh, and there's a J Panther. There's a J Panther. J Panther. Ooh, and he missed. Lucky me. 15 seconds till I reload. Ooh, SU 100 finished him off. Nice shot. Now I'm going to get a little more advanced with it, being as how they're hiding so far back. Take my pot shot at the M44. Maybe I can get lucky and hit him. I'm a little bit past him because I know this, the shell is going to travel. Ooh, I landed pretty near him. But see, a lot of people when they get into an artillery, they just go ahead and assume, oh, well, I'm on Kharkov, or oh, I'm on Ruinberg, I'm going to do terrible and I can't do anything. Well, if you play it smart and you play it right and you play it a little more patiently, <coughs> you can actually do a pretty decent amount of damage. And right there, I just saved the team from a capture. Now, of course, the SU-100 was coming back as well as the E-3, but who's to say the 100 wouldn't have bounced and him finish him off and the E-3 could have easily been killed by him as well. This Hellcat's going to come after me, see if I can't turn around and get him first. Come here, boy. I'm going to no-scope him. Oh, and I missed. We captured the base. The end. I knew I could take at least one shot from him. So I figured I'd just go around the corner and just take it and hope I get him. And unfortunately I did not. But in doing so I did damage the ammo rack of the Oni and the loader by shooting him straight flush into the side like that with the AT shell. I broke the radio gun and turret of the E8 which tells me my shot went directly into his gun mantle and still penetrated and killed him. I hit the tracks of the VK meaning that I probably hit him straight onto the side. I get a bruiser for damage the blah, blah, blah. damaging the crew of people on the enemy team that's nice and let's look at the damage 865 not bad it's double the health i have and i still place in the top 10 of the team so i did my part whereas you can see the enemy artillery do 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 488 381 and where did the other one go i just went straight past him There he is. 234. Did not do as well. Our artillery as well did not do very well. But I placed in the top. I did well. It was a city map and I did okay. So I'm going to take him out for one more. And then I'm going to cut the video, take a break, and then I'm going to do the M44. Hopefully I can get more of a open laid out map here and then I'm aiming for a tier 8 and a tier 9, strangely enough. Ugh. It's a tier 7 game. But... I did get one wish, it is an open-sided map, Fiery Salient. It's just a remake of another map, but it's a little cooler looking, I actually like it. Unless you have an average low FPS on your computer, then it just sucks because there's so much extra going on in the map. You got artillery bombardments and planes everywhere, which is pretty cool. They added more carcasses to the field. Well, E25's on our team, that's nice. We only got one light tank though, but it's a Chaffee versus their ELC, so... I have faith in the Chaffee versus the ELC here. The ELC has terrible traverse, so he can't do too well on the top of that hill. But then at the same time, the ELC is a lot smaller and a little bit faster than the Chaffee. So if he knows how to play his ELC, he should be able to do all right. But right off the bat, I don't know where this Chaffee's going. Maybe he's not going to scout. That kind of sucks. So hoping to get some early shots in on this game. I'm going to head down to this side because it's less suspected for an artillery to go here. Obviously, when I'm on the side of the map, everyone thinks, oh, the artillery is sitting next to the railway. Well, actually, I'm going to go sit down the 1-2 line. That way my shots down here connect easier on the enemies that are camping down here. 
and there's a lot more shrubbery to hide in right over here. Gives me a better camouflage. Now I am wearing a camouflage net as well, which being an artillery, once you get up to the bigger sizes, you're better off replacing that arc, that um, camo net with somebody something more useful. Right now I have a gun laying drive, a camo net, and a shell rammer. <coughs> when you get up to the bigger artillery, you might want to consider putting on like vents or something else like that, because the camo net's going to be pretty useless when you get when you start firing 200 millimeter cannons. But right now I'm only using 150 millimeter cannons, so it's not too terrible. See if I can get an early shot on this T or this Type 34, real quick. Take my shot. Back up. Ooh, splash him for 95 damage. At least I did something. I took a shot in the dark and I got it. Wasn't aimed in all the way, but I knew he was going to back up. And he's finished off. ELC is over here and our chaffee's on that side, so our scouts are on two completely different sides of the map, which is pretty interesting. But, ELC is just sitting in that bush. I'm not sure if I should take him out or not. Is somebody else going to take him out? Because I definitely will. Ooh, the M44 got him. Just before I could. It's a shame, but at least he's dead. Go ahead and let everybody know I'm loaded and I'm looking this way. Those e that E25 is pushing up. We've got the BDR and the OI over here. That shouldn't be too bad. Tiger P. Plant my shot for 487, aiming at his commander's hatch. As I said earlier, you want to aim for the top, uppermost top part of their tank. That way, when your shot is landing in from the arc, you can have a higher chance of hitting the lower parts of his tank as well, instead of just aiming for the lower plate and hitting the dirt in front of him. You always want to aim towards the back of the target. Because of the way your shell comes in, it comes in from the top and then arcs its way down. This is method to the madness. SC-100 is a very easy target for artillery. Aim a little bit behind him, right above his head. Ooh, and the OI finishes him off. My shot was in vain. Tiger P is almost dead from all that fire he took earlier. Go ahead and launch my reload into the chat and see if anybody's paying attention and realizes, oh, hey, I should probably not push up the artillery's reloading. More often than not, they don't pay attention. They don't care. But when it comes to strongholds, clan battles, and etc., etc., it's not a bad idea to do it. But more so want to call your reload out loud. If we don't get any more action on this side, I'm going to have to start looking towards that 8-9 uh, line of the map. They look like they're getting pretty swamped over there. I'm going to go ahead and aim for that tiger. The tiger's backing up behind the rock. He's in a pretty wide open spot there, but he's know he's being targeted by artillery. He just had one shot fly over his head, so he thinks he's safe. He's going to take his shot and keep going. He's going to pull forward a little bit, see if he can't aim up a second shot. <coughs> Unbeknownst to him, am I aiming for him? But now I don't have anybody to spot him. Everybody's dead on that side besides the E25. Ugh. This game does not look like it's going too well. We need to push one side, or we need to defend the other. We got all these people jumbled up and massed into the corner. That's not going to cut it here. That is not a good situation to be in. Now I know I'm going to lose my light, so I'm going to go ahead and take a random shot at where the E2 was. Because while I'm reloading, nobody's going to get spotted in that time anyways, because they're too far away. Go ahead and adjust my aim, of my arc of fire a little bit and back up. Since I know they're going to be coming over that railroad track or coming over the middle part of the town right there. Make sure I don't want to knock over any trees while I'm doing it, because with so few tanks left... You want to make sure the uh, enemy artillery is not trying to counter artillery you. Now I may get into that a video a little later, but it's actually pretty simple. You just aim for where you think the artillery is and you follow their smoke trails on the map. Because whether they're spotted or not, you can still see their fire trail. And then you just trace it back and land a shell on top of them. And those gold shells are actually, the high explosive gold shells are actually really good for taking out enemy artillery. Because even if you land anywhere near them, because artillery is such a soft target, you're more guaranteed to penetrate. And when I'm doing counter artillery, I actually do load those shells up to see if I can't take them out with that. Makes it a little easier, a little less work for me, a little more death for them. It's good all around. Credits are expensive, but I value experience a little more than I do credits. I have premium tanks for a reason. Now, of course, if you don't want to spend your credits, that's perfectly okay, but... See if I can't finish it off E2. Nope, right over his head. <coughs> I don't know why I'm coughing so much. The tiger and the E2 should be dead in a second. I don't know why they're even still alive. E2's gone, that tiger's not. Ten more seconds, I'm going to take him out if somebody else doesn't. 
more so worried about that KV-85 at this point. There he goes, the M41 got him. Let him know I'm loaded. 29 seconds. That T20 and the KV-85 are my biggest concerns right now. The E25 comes barreling in from anywhere. I'm completely surrounded by a shell of tanks right now. Which is kind of why I backed into this corner because I knew they were going to be corner camping so hard over here. Which, I don't really like seeing teams do that, but in this situation where it's keeping me alive, I'm okay with it because I know we're going to win this match regardless. So it's not too huge of a deal to me. If we were losing, it would make me upset. There he is, the 25s right there with the 85. I'm going to take a shot, see if I can't hit the 85. And I finished him off. It looked like it landed straight into his engine compartment. He was backing up over the railing to try and get a better gun depression out of it. Which was good in retrospect, but not when you have an artillery aiming at you. You got no armor in the rear of your tank. 88 penetration straight into the rear of your tank. It's probably about 40, 30 millimeters of armor in the back of the KV-85. Punches straight in, goes right out the other end, and explodes him in between. I'm fully loaded for this E-25 who's peeking over the ridge. Got two E-25s duking it out in the field. Maybe he'll stay alive long enough for me to load in. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Back up. There it is. Alright, now the only person left is that T-20. And I can almost guarantee he's probably not sitting in that same spot. So I'm going to go ahead and back up a little bit and try, in case he tries to get brave. But for this situation, I'm going to go ahead and stay on top of him. Ooh, and he's been tracked. He's been tracked. And he's gone before I could fire. Good game. That wasn't too bad. 15 to 7. Kind of sucked for their team. I don't understand why our guys camped so hard in the corner right there. But it came out for the better being as hard. The rest of our team was pretty decent. <coughs> I placed in 3 for damage. And pretty low on the scoreboard for experience. But that's okay. I got 1187 damage. See, I fired eight times. Got two hits and two splashes. Not too shabby. Took out a track and I took out an engine, like I said, on the KV-85. So all in all, you can make a pretty good amount of money off of the GW Panther. I made a pretty decent amount of experience with Premium, of course. But I'm going to go ahead and cut the video. I'm going to take a break and then I'm going to do the M44. I'll merge the two clips together and it'll be a video by the time you guys see it. Thank you for watching. Cut it, cut, 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 cut. Oh, wow, that was a really short break, wasn't it? It was just like, boom, it was like it happened in an instant. Well, anyways, done with the GW Panther, had our fun with the two matches. Let's slide on over to the M44, going down one tier into a tier 6. Now, the M44 is basically the M41 that you play at tier 5, except, like, minuscule tiny little differences in the gun and everything. Now the rate of fire does go up by 0.33. Penetration and the damage stay the exact same. The accuracy gets better by 0.2 and the aim time gets one second better. So it does make it an overall better gun. A lot of people complain that they don't really think it's justified to be called a tier 6 gun being as how it's only tiny little minuscule differences over the tier 5. But the M44 and the M41 are actually some of the better artillery I've ever played in this game. And they have really, really quick reload times. And they're really accurate and aim pretty quick. Well, I'm not going to say they're really accurate. But they aim quick and they have really quick reload times. So that makes up for it. <coughs> I'm kind of dreading playing this M12 because everything I've heard from it and everybody in and all the stats and blah, 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 all of it and all that. It's, uh, it's not too great of a tank. The guns are okay, but they're like super super terrible compared to what everybody's ever told me and what I've seen the stats for them are actually pretty okay and the damage and the penetration and everything is on par with the GW Panther like I was saying now it's significantly slower than 1.6 but the penetration is the exact same as 50 more damage 0.2 more um, 0.2 less accuracy and it's half a second longer to re um, to aim it but overall, it's pretty much the same. But the gun arc is terrible for the M12. But enough about this. I'm talking about the M44. The M44, 280 hit points is good pull for a tier 6. It doesn't weigh too much. It's based off of like the Priest chassis. 
It's got good engine power. It's got a good speed sitting at about 56. You could get about 260 if you had a good crew in it. Traverse speed is not very good, and the armor is complete terrible garbage. But that's okay. Traverse speed for the gun is okay, but the overall tank itself is a good tank. And let's take it into a battle, and I'll prove it to you. I'll prove to you that the tier 6 gun is better than the tier 5. Now, unfortunately, we're on Fisherman's Bay, which does have half city. But I am playing with tier 7s and I'm okay with that because I got some bigger boy tanks to aim at here. Penetration may not be all that great but at least they're slow and I'm fast. So that's all that matters in my world. Now right off the bat I know I can either hide in three spots. I can hide back here and hope I don't get sniped or artillery from right there because it's a pretty common artillery spot. I can hide over here and hope I don't get scouted or artillery from there. But I think I might aim for right about here, right back there. In that little area because at least I know if somebody's coming down this line and we can't fight what's coming down there I can take this little goalie right here and boom straight into the valley and straight down to that way taking this entire downhill stretch right here straight into over towards the city and find cover in my fellow comrades who will completely wring me out to dry now here's a perfect example of the slow track traverse speed but right off the bat my tank is already almost loaded as soon as the match begins now I forgot to go over the ammo before I went to the match, but it's nothing spectacular. It's just a regular HE shell and a uh, heat shell. So, you know, you got the 240 average penetration of 78 here. It's pretty much the exact same as any other artillery heat shell is going to be. It's a 155 millimeter cannon, so the camo is going to be a little bit worse. I am hiding behind bushes from this perspective and that, that perspective. I'm a little left a little open over there. I'm not too worried about them far enough back. I don't think anybody's going to get back here. The gun arc is exceptionally large which is good. It means I can move the gun a little more freely without having to move the entire tank. Right off the bat, I'm going to be aiming for these guys as a center because they're the only ones lit and I got a quick reload speed. I want to get some quick lights and shots in. Ooh! A little bit of a lag shot there. I saw it hit him before he... That was weird. Hope I'm not lagging the entire game. That would suck. It really throws off your shots when that happens. I'm not sure if I was lagging or if he was lagging, but somebody was in a different spot than the other. And then I'm loaded. Boom. 19 and a half seconds right there. See if I can't get a shot off on this Cromwell. See how I'm moving it vertically instead of horizontally. I don't want to mess up my aiming circle. Aim a little ahead of him and boom. Splash him for 25 damage. Not too shabby. It's a lot easier of a target to hit than this M8 because the M8 was moving significantly faster as we spotted him. But now that he's at the bottom of the hill, he's not. he doesn't have that, blah, 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 that speed behind it. Move straight up towards the Cromwell. Keep my aiming circle pretty much the exact same. Cromwell isn't moving, aim for the top of his turret, and splash right behind him. I landed right here, which unfortunately wasn't close enough to do any splash damage to him. That Cromwell is getting torn up by our team over here. Hopefully that's a testament to how the rest of the match is going to go. I hope the team is pretty decent. Now I want these guys to go ahead and push up, because I am aimed in and I'm ready to go, reared and ready to fire. If not, I'm going to have to start taking shots into the city where that Oni is. I know we got some weaker tanks over there. I'm not sure if they can take them on too well, unless they can get behind them. <coughs> Here we go, an SU-100. Nice, easy, soft target. Take a shot at him. And right behind him. See, the accuracy right here is what really is the only weakness of the M44 besides the turret, besides the track traverse. I'm going to go ahead and aim for this Jagdpanzer because he's the only one that's not moving. I was going to go for the E25, but... The, ar the blah blah. The accuracy of it is not too great, but that's made up for in the fire speed and the aiming speed. Ooh, and I one shot at that Jagdpanzer IV. Yeah, straight into his side for 700 alpha damage on average, and he only had about 680, 650. I wasn't paying attention. I'll start aiming for this Churchill over here. He's an armed target, but uh, the gun carrier is not too quick. No top armor, hopefully I hit him at the top, and I did hit him, boom, right there, the smoke trail disappeared, that means I hit him. I'm already pretty much ready to go by the time the Cromwell spots him again, I got 8 more seconds to fire. Go ahead and move ahead of him vertically and go ahead and aim it before he gets there. Sorry, horizontally, I don't know why I'm having an issue with that today. Fire a little bit ahead of him, and boom, right behind him, that sucks, but we lost the city. Look at that, look at how much change is right there. Right before your very eyes. I'm going to go ahead and start aiming at this IS-2 because he's a high value target right now. And he's pretty low on health and he's out in the open field. 
Aim right ahead of him, and he stopped. But I still hit him for 9 damage. 9 damage isn't much, but it's a hit. And it counts, it does something that's a little bit of credits and experience. A lot more credits and experience I would have earned than if I missed. So I'm perfectly okay with it. I would have wished it would hit him in the side. I'd probably get about 350, 200 damage if I hit him in the side. But, that's okay. I'm loaded up, ready to go. Hopefully somebody spots something soon. It's 85 and the T25 are in really good positions right now. They got the higher ground, but the 85 doesn't have any gun printed or gun um, depression. He's got to be really careful with that. T20 I knew was going to die. I didn't bother taking the shot off on him. This Hellcat is pretty straightforward back so I can aim without much penalty of losing my aim. Take a shot second behind him and ooh and it lands right there or right here. I don't know which one was whose shot. Somebody missed him. I'm assuming this was my shot because of the explosion it made. Go ahead and move a little bit more further this way into the city in case that T-29 needs help if I can't find any targets down here. Top priority right now is that IS-2 and the Hellcat. Those are the deadliest tanks in my mind right now. The IS-2 sitting out in the open. Dumber than dirt and straight over his head. Again with the accuracy of the M44. Like I said, it's a really good tank, but that accuracy is the only weakness I've ever found in this tank. Being as how I can aim in really quickly and I can shoot really quickly, but that doesn't mean I'm going to hit him. And that's just like any other tank. Usually the faster you fire with light tanks, the less accurate they're going to be. T-29 finishes him off. I was hoping I could get him real quick. And the Hummel gets spotted. Unfortunately, I'm not loaded up for the Hummel. i got ten more seconds to wait, but I'm the only artillery on our team, so maybe I'll get to him first. The Hummel fires and looks like he's backing up. He might be backing up. I am a little bit behind him. Hopefully I can hit him in the top of his carriage and detonate that HE shell in the top of his tank. And, ooh, hit the rock right next to him for 133. Not sure if he's trying to commit suicide right now or what. Yeah, he's falling off the rock. Yeah, he's going. I'm going to go ahead and ignore him for the rest of the match. He's pretty much opted himself out of this game. And for this E25 who doesn't have the mind to move, he's just sitting in this spot taking shots after shot after shot. 293 into the rear and track him for my team. Like I said, quick fire, quick fire. It doesn't have to be relatively accurate as long as I'm getting shots on him. And I sh I'm hitting him and I'm hitting him. Let's see if I can take out this Hellcat for my team. Nope. No can go on that. It took way too long to get there. I didn't expect the Hellcat to back over the side of the building. I expected the Hellcat to just keep dancing back and forth. I didn't think he'd go back over here. Black Prince and the Hummel are the only ones left. The Hummel's pretty much out of the game, so I'm just going to focus on the Black Prince, who's at full health. All right, he's backing up. He's taking shots. Try and put it into a side over here. And it lands right behind him and does no damage. The Hummel got back out of the water. He's okay, and now he's dead. So, <coughs> Black Prince is pretty much invincible to the Cromwells and the 85 over here. The 85 is the only one that can really do anything to him unless the Cromwells catch his rear. Go ahead and plant a shot right ahead of him. Hopefully he drives right into it. And it just bounces on the ground right next to him again. That really sucks. I want these guys to just keep them spotted. Keep them spotted. I don't want, I don't want them to run out there and die because it's just going to be me and him and I'm not going to be able to do anything. Ah, he moves again. Comet gets brave. Can you do it, Comet? Can you move faster than him? No, because your traverse is terrible. You're going to get taken out. Get out of there, Comet. Put a shot on the Black Prince. Hurry up. Yeah! Straight into the top of his tank. Almost hit the Comet on that, but I had to take the chance. He was going to kill the Comet in the 85, and then I would have been alone by him. I had to take the shot. And look at that. I finished a mission. Woot. Well, I've already finished the mission, all I did was just get it with honors. I got a first class and I got a bruiser, and look at all the damage I did. I broke a track and a radio, track and an engine, a track and a radio operator, a track, a shot at him, didn't hit him, didn't do anything to him. Broke a track, track and an engine, a track, and a turret and a radio operator, meaning that I planted that right into the front of his turret, right on the top of his turret, I couldn't quite tell. Team score, second on the team for damage. Look at that, 2136. Fourth for experience, not too shabby. The Comet is really what kept this team alive with the 25 or the 2400 damage. 
and then the Cromwell and the 85 and the T-52, and then it pretty much trickles down from there down to the 67, who got a big fat goose egg doing no damage at all. There's our one-shotted Jagdpanzer IV right there. There's our pain-in-the-ass E-25, who took a shell straight into his ass. And here's the final report with 18 shots and 4 penetrations, but 9 splashes. That means 13 out of 18 shots hit. That's not too bad. That's about 60-70% accuracy. It's not too terrible. At least I splashed and did something to him. I only used about 9,000 credits in, ex um, in shells, and I made profit of 29, of course, with premium. Go ahead and launch it into another battle. I'm going to miss the M44 when I get the M12. I really will. I enjoy this tank. Like I said, that accuracy kills me sometimes. It kills me. But being able to drop shells like 5, 6, 7, sometimes even 10 seconds faster than other artilleries that of this tier, it really makes a difference. Because it has a really high alpha gun and it has a decent penetration. Because the 700 alpha on the M41 was overpowered, let alone it being thrown onto a tier 6. Well, I'm not going to say overpowered, but it was really, really good. And then you throw it onto a tier 6 with a faster reload speed, and it just gets better. Now, this is a tier 8 match, which is good, yes, okay, but it's only one tier 8 on each side, and we have a tier 8 artillery, unfortunately. And then this is one of the worst maps for artillery in the game, Himmelsdorf, but I'm looking at all these other artilleries, three more on their team, maybe I can get up onto that hill, and there it is. I'm going to get up onto that hill over there and see if I can't shoot them, because the artillery are either going to be sitting over here on their side, right next to these this uh, cathedral on their flag, or in this corner. Usually it's this corner right here. But the only issue is when I'm sitting right here, every time I fire I have to move, and I can't move forward, I have to move off to the side, so I gotta kinda do this awkward backup maneuver that I'll show you in a second when, as soon as the game starts. Like this. I wanna get away from their shot as far as possible, because a lot of... because what I'm gonna be doing when I don't have shots onto the hill is trying to counter artillery their artillery if they're there. No, they have a GW Panther, so he's a little bit slower and bigger. I don't think he's going to be on the hill. I think he'll try and aim for the train yards with his gun traverse. It'll be good. And uh, hopefully I don't crash right into this Burt. But the M44 and the Lorraine, being as how quick they are and good they are, they might be on the hill with me. So we'll see where that goes right there. The FV-207's going for those train tracks. Not a bad call. I'd do the same thing. The Burt's going for the tank alley. Good call on his part. I'm going to not squish these cars right here. I want him to think I'm over here with those squished cars. So when he starts taking a shot or starts aiming for me, for me um, blah, blah, blah. Initially, I want him to be aiming for that spot over there. I don't want him to aim for me. Now, the good thing about this is that it's vertical movement from here all the way down to where the artillery would be sitting. So I'm not going to lose any aim circle there. E25 is spotted right off the bat. He's backing up over cover. I was going to take a shot, but it's not worth it. Hellcat is sitting out in the open. Take a shot, take a shot. Right over his head, and it just keeps going into the hill down there. That's the bad thing about being on the hill. <coughs> Everything is up really, really high. So your shots are either going to connect, or they're just going to be a complete failed miss. But that's okay. I got a good reload speed. I'm going to take another shot at this Hellcat, see if I can't hit him. Nope, hit the road right in front of him. It's a shame, but I'm going to keep going in for it, keep going in for it. That bird is aiming down that tank alley, but he has no help besides that KV-3. We're going to get blown straight out in that tank alley. So that pretty much limits my retreat option right here. we got to take this hill. If we don't take this hill, I'm pretty much screwed because I'm not going to be able to run through my base with them guys sitting right there. Take a shot at the T-20. Flies right over his head. This is not going too well. It's too late for the tank alley. I'm not going to be able to retreat. I have to commit to the hill now. The only thing I can do really is try and see if I can get shots on this IS over here if I'm not going to go on top of the hill, which I really don't plan on doing. And I'm going to fire for the IS. I missed. Maybe I splashed and got lucky. I want to get, get the hell out of Dodge before that 150 comes around the corner. I don't even want to be spotted. I probably got spotted, but there it is. I'm around the corner. I'm good. I'm on top of the hill. Let's try and get away from these guys not much you can do in a situation like this. You can see the other artillery and the rest of my team is dropping like flies. Pretty much the only guy on top of this hill now besides that VK. Maybe I can go up there and like spot that SP for him. Or maybe even just come around the corner and blow around straight into him if he doesn't take him out. And he does take him out, so that's good. 
get up top here. I want to get down to, to that little spot over there, see if I can't take shots into our capture. Yes, I can. Where's that E25? That E25 is gone. Pull a little farther forward. Maybe I can hit that tiger. At this point, I'm just going for any shot I can possibly get at all. The Lorraine is spotted. The Lorraine is moving. I'll just take a shot. Really doubt I'm going to hit him. But it was worth a try. He was moving. Oh, and the IS gets me. And I'm out. Should have been aiming for that IS, but instead I wanted to try and get any shot I could possibly get before the end of the match. Go ahead and watch this bulldog for the rest of the match. He's probably going to get stomped by this IS if he's not careful. He's doing alright. Could be missing and bouncing less, but he's starting to panic. That IS is going to finish him off if he's not careful. He's running out of shots. And he's gone. That IS has got him. VK is coming down like he's going to save the day. He's not going to do much tier 6 versus the tier 7. Unless he can get that shot straight into the IS's buttocks, which is not going to happen. The IS is now facing him. All I can see is his turret. He's going to die. KV-3 is over here taking on an E-25. Good luck with that. Here comes the RHM around the corner. I don't know, who knows, we might actually win this one. It'd be a weird freak occurrence. KV-3 misses his shot, he should have aimed it a little longer. RHM, Tiger, and a Lorraine are still hiding somewhere on this map. Lorraine is right behind the VK. Be careful, Mr. VK, he's going to come around the corner and burt you. KV-3 needs to get around this corner and get him, but the VK is going to get surrounded by that Tiger. Oh, and the RHM finishes him off. So he's pretty much screwed at this point. He either has to commit to the RHM, the Tiger, or the Lorraine. He cannot take on all three. If I was him, I'd be going after the Lorraine and the RHM, but he's going to get finished off by that RHM in a second. Or the Lorraine. Lorraine fires. Hits him in the track. RHM misses. Look at that. He takes out the Lorraine, and the Tiger finishes him off. That's a shame. Good effort, team. I give you a tiny little golf applaud. It was 13-15. We were close. I did terrible. I'm not going to even try and fake that. I didn't get a single shot to penetrate and do damage, but I'm not even going to bother looking because I'm assuming all the rest of the artillery weren't so lucky either. So let's roll past that, see if we can't get a better second game in here before I end this video. I don't really like ending on a bad note here. The whole point of this is showing the pros of the tanks and the cons of the tanks, not just getting pooped on because it's a terrible match and a bad team. But, you know, should fare a little better on this map. Uh, it's not looking too shabby. It's tier sixes, though. Kind of same for seven and eight, but you know, whatever. We got the big heavy guys on our side, so I'm kind of aiming for medium tanks on this. This kind of sucks. The only real slow slow targets I'm gonna have are those 100 sluggers and the KV ones. Ugh. Really not too even of a match, KV-2 and OI platoon. But then again, if those Cromwells play it right, too bad they're not all in one platoon. They could actually pull this off pretty well. Pretty easily as well. The last thing you want to do is fight a wolf pack of Cromwells. Looks like the OIs are going down to the river, and the KV-2 is going to take this hill over here for the tanks. Oh, I didn't even notice that. The KV-2 and the OIs are not all in the same platoon. KV-2's with two other tanks. Look at that. That explains why they're splitting up. Looks like you could have a triple derp in one spot. That'd be triple threat. Triple H. Smackdown versus Raw. Go ahead and aim in right here. Last time I aimed in right here with the GW Panther in a match a couple of days ago, I was just aiming down here and then a share tier gets spotted right about here and I aimed right here and I fired and the share tier drives straight into it and dies 40 seconds into the match share tier gone one shot dead sucked for him he was kinda pissed and I apologized but at the same time I'm not really gonna apologize because he knew the risk of driving up here instead of driving up against there or not just taking this little pocket up here that's obviously always safer than coming up here and coming around this corner and bending up I don't understand why he didn't go the other way but 
lesson learned with that. And it was an easy shot for me. A lot of damage and experience. Tripled my health and damage just by shooting one time. Go ahead and let everybody know that I'm loaded and ready to fire since nobody wants to move forward and spot anything. Nothing up here so far besides the Cromwell. I might have to switch sides if that's all. Ew. This is going to be an ugly match. There's going to be a lot of one shots. The Crusader's taking people out left and right. Let's see if I can't hit that M4 real quick. Crusader can't do much against the M4. Do him a favor. Take him out, not fully aimed, but I hit the M4 anyways. Fantastic. Go ahead and just center my reticle straight towards the middle of the map because we're pushing them back pretty far already. I suspect they're going to be camping base and then later I can go for artillery hunting, if anything. Go ahead and let the Covenator and everybody know that I'm loaded up and ready to go. They want to spot that M4 again. There's an E2. There's a worthy adversary. Go ahead. Mm, too late to drop a shell. Not gonna risk it. Try that M4 one more time. Ooh, that M4 took a lot of damage from that shot. Aim a little farther ahead of him, he's quick. And splash him for 66 and landed right next to him right here, painting the road right there. His track will be fixed in a second or two, so I'm not gonna be able to shoot him again. The other artillery fires and misses the shot, but the E2 is up here, big Papa Slanger up here to take on the team. Take out these two scouts that are up here. I'm gonna try and nail that E2 when he comes around the corner if I can. Got no shots on him. Can't do anything. Sorry, pal. Unless they start relocating. I'm gonna go straight back and aim for their student panzer back here. Just spotted another artillery right here. Based on his smoke trail, take out the student panzer. There's the M44, I was only a little off, but did you guys see that smoke trail? If you didn't rewind it a few seconds, you can see it. Right here, his smoke trail left, and that's how I knew where he was. There's not much else left to aim for at this point besides this bishop, who's just sitting out in the middle of the open. Can't hit him anyways. So I guess it becomes a base defense at this point. The only thing really left is in the middle. Take a pot shot at the Cromwell. Nah, completely missed, but it's okay. <coughs> I didn't want to risk aiming in and him moving. Sometimes you just gotta call your shots. Sam Ford's holding still. If he keeps holding still for a few more seconds, he's gonna catch one right into the butt. Go ahead. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Straight into my shot. Plant it right into the front of his turret. This E2 is coming around the corner. He's going to go brave, go for the capture. Maybe I can take him out. Oh, he's moving. He's swerving and dodging. All I got to do is 277. Shouldn't be too bad. Aim ahead of him. Aim ahead. Aim ahead. Aim ahead. And fire. 66. Oh, there it is, folks. That's the end of the game. This Cromwell is going to finish me off, if anything. Somebody else did. And I'm tracked. Yep, there it is. And I'm gone. But I got my damage in. Did pretty well. Like I said, this was going to be a brutal match. As long as I stay on the capture circle up there, we should win. Wouldn't surprise me if that Cromwell dropped off the capture circle, though, trying to get greedy for some points. Good luck, SU5. And luck was not with him as the E2 takes him out. Somebody takes out the E2. And the only thing left is the Cromwell. It looks like the Panzer IV might get him in a second if he's got that derp gun, which he does not. He'll probably finish off the Cromwell in one shot, but now it's going to take him two or three. He misses one. He should have kept going. He should have rammed him. You lose your engine. Now you're screwed. The Cromwell's going to circle you. Fires a shot. Doesn't go through. And the Cromwell finishes him off. Oh, and the 85 takes him out. Got lucky. Panzer IV was breathing on his last little bit of oxygen right there. Did pretty well, got a bruiser and a class 3 badge, got 717 experience. Knocked down an engine track and a loader, which basically tells me that my shell landed directly into the cabin of his tank. 
The M4 ate it straight into his turret by taking out his gunner and his commander. It probably went right to the gun mantlet next to his, um, that, that his gun. Took out the track on the E2 doing the 66 damage earlier. And the Cromwell ate it into the track doing 72 damage. Not too shabby, could have been a lot better, but I got 679 out of it. And hopefully you guys were paying attention to as to how I was aiming ahead of everything. Now of course you're not just going to pick it up right off the bat and be like, Oh, well I just aimed this far ahead of it and everything is fine, okay, better. Well, no, because you have to know the muzzle velocity. You don't have to know the velocity of your of your cannon. But you need to know how quick your shell is going to get there based on the time. So basically when you first get to your artillery, the first thing you want to do when you're firing is you want to pay attention to how far away a target is with the meter indicator that I pointed out earlier. And then you want to be counting your shells like in your head, like subconsciously when you fire. Like, oh, that took about two or three seconds to get there. Or that took uh, three, four seconds to get there if you're firing from 800, 900 meters away from one end of the map to the other. You need to be paying attention to that number and knowing the travel speed of your shell. There are some mods that will do that for you, but I think they're illegal now. I don't know. Um, and they're always not 100% accurate either. They just go off of a math calculation. There's always, you know, random variables and everything that goes into it. But they do help out a little bit. Um... Other than that, if you didn't catch something, just go back into the video, watch it again. Like I said, watch those moving shots. Those moving shots are critical. I almost never missed a moving shot because I've played the GW Panther and the M44 so many times that I've gotten into the groove of knowing how fast the tra shell travels depending on the distance, and I'm getting better with the artillery the more and more I play it. A lot of people call it Sky Cancer, which I find a really offensive and stupid name. And a lot of people call it overpowered and everything, but it's really not. It's only if you know how to play it. A lot of people are terrible with artillery, and they never really get past tier 4 and 5 because they don't want to stop and learn. They just think it's just point and click. There's a lot more to it than just pointing and clicking. You have to actually be paying attention to your team and everything involved. Like a light tank, you are one of the biggest deciders on your team. But... Soon I'll be getting rid of the GW Panther, and I'll be getting other bigger GWs, and then I'll get that satellite dish on the back of my tank, and I'll be watching Madden NFL while shooting at tanks. Of course, you can't actually do that. But anyways, pay attention to the bigger German um, artilleries when you see them, the Tier 8 and 9, I don't remember which one it is. But one of them, when you upgrade the gun all the way, I think, I think it's the Tier 9. No. It's the Tier 8. When you get this gun right here, it puts a giant satellite dish onto the back of his gun right here. Instead of having like a piece of armor right here, there's going to be like a giant dish looking thing. It's going to look like it should have direct TV planted on the side of it. And it'll be on the back of his tank. And it's actually pretty funny. They make a lot of jokes about it. It's pretty much the tog of the higher tier tanks. So thanks again for watching, guys. Make sure you like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Try and keep it friendly. Um, other than that, I do have the rest of the channel. Feel free to check it out. These are for beginners. I don't really expect novice or ex novice players. It's okay, but like expert players and everything, you know, I don't mind if you watch the videos, but I'm not really expecting somebody in the bigger clans or a player with a nine, ten thousand player experience ratio to be coming down here and like reading, watching all the videos and everything. It's more it's beginner level knowledge. I'm not throwing everything super advanced out there. It's just to help you guys out. I do do it mainly for my clan, but I put it public just for everyone else as well. So like I said, like, comment, subscribe, and share. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Oh, and let me know how you think about that uh, intro that I'm putting in, because if not, I may need to change the intro, but I thought it was a nice little addition. It took me forever to put it together, too, so you know. You know. Make sure you hit that like button. Thanks again for watching.